great question. It's, I've been answering it for a year now. Blockchain is a uh, shared ledger. So it's a chronological list of transactions or asset transfers or data points that's shared across a marketplace. The simplest way to understand a blockchain is that it's a software expression of a governance agreement about how two or multiple parties are going to do business together. Traditionally, to do business or to make transactions throughout history, we've needed a third party to verify that we've all followed the rules and that the transaction actually took place. But with a blockchain, we don't need a third party. The software itself enforces the rules that we've agreed upon uh, as to how to do business and how to transact. Blockchain is the uh, immutable distributed ledger that underlies a lot of things that we've heard about, like Bitcoin and Ethereum and a lot of the tokens that are getting created. Blockchain is a decentralized database. It stores information publicly. It's the new technology. All blockchain is is a data structure. And what this data structure allows people to do is allows two parties who don't trust each other to interact with each other without an intermediary. As a shared immutable ledger that sits on top of a marketplace, it becomes a development platform. And that's where a lot of the really interesting use cases uh, exist, is, is how do you use the blockchain to develop new types of technologies uh, across a marketplace, and instead of working at a traditional kind of enterprise or siloed uh, data structure. Just keep on hooking. Traditional databases are often compared to blockchains, and it's a little hard to understand how they're different. In essence, a blockchain is a decentralized database. It, it's not held by one party, one entity, or one individual. It can be written to and it can be read by multiple different parties. No one party gets to, to control access to that database. One, it's decentralized, so no one entity has control over all of it. It's also permissionless, so you're not beholden to any company or uh, organization. So it's different than a traditional data structure because it's specific to a market. It's not focused on one enterprise typically. It's, it's, a, it's a market level data structure and that allows us to think more holistically about how assets move across uh, a marketplace versus how assets are managed uh, from one transactional um, uh, relational database to another. No. No. Blockchain is not the same as Bitcoin. Bitcoin runs on a blockchain. It is different than Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. Bitcoin was the very first blockchain that emerged and it was wildly successful uh, in the open. And it showed us a way of architecting blockchains for a variety of other use cases beyond cryptocurrency. Everything that we do is a derivative of the original Bitcoin blockchain. The Bitcoin blockchain is very good at managing Bitcoin. A lot of the work that we're doing is based off of kind of this concept of the blockchain as a development platform um, and using smart contracts to automate business, cross, business processes for a, a marketplace. The disruptive potential for blockchain in healthcare is to help alleviate really complex and inefficient transactions. Healthcare transactional networks involve multiple parties, they involve multiple steps, a lot of back and forth, and often these processes are really inefficient and costly. Blockchains can take out a lot of the friction and inefficiency in healthcare networks. In addition, by making them decentralized, we can ensure that no one entity or party gets to pervert the platform for their own interests alone, ensuring that all transactional parties are getting maximum value out of the transactional network. By being able to create trust hard-coded into software uh, in the blockchain and the applications that are written on top of it, you're able to remove a lot of friction that exists within the healthcare system or any other system that exists purely to validate transactions. Okay, so think claims processing, medical records, the pharma value chain, all of these are these really complicated, costly, inefficient um, marketplaces where there's a lot of infrastructure and a lot of kind of value extraction that sits between the two endpoints. The blockchain allows us to, by moving trust down to the protocol, it allows us to think, uh, think new about how we would redesign some of these value chains to create a more efficient uh, kind of peer-to-peer -peer process. Blockchain is a, a great new technology that can really disrupt the, the old ways of kind of storing data and healthcare technology. 
Blockchain is an emerging technology. And one of the biggest problems companies are facing right now is how do I generate an immediate return on investment for doing blockchain work? You can't be looking for a six month ROI. Any kind of blockchain project is about building a network. The risks are uh, certainly failure. Uh, it's an early market. There's a lot of projects that won't succeed. Blockchain is very early, um, so there's a lot of technical risks, but things are maturing quickly. Getting people to collaborate, getting people to think in new ways about how to operate kind of more of at a market level. These are uh, key challenges to overcome, and that's why you hear a lot about consortia uh, and blockchain. It's how do we create networks? Because without a network, the blockchain is really just an expensive academic exercise. Same question that companies faced uh, at the dawn of the internet. Why should I get involved in the internet? Um, companies should get involved early so they can figure out their maximum value from a new technology. Coming to the table early means that you get a voice in setting the terms on how these transactional networks are constructed and what the transactions look like on it. Make sure your voice is represented. The early adopters of the technology are the creators of the technology and they will write the rules literally in smart contracts and later adopters will have to live with those rules as they've been created. You've got to recognize the fact that market structures are changing. And so when your market structure is changing, it's a good idea to be a part of that conversation at an early stage. Blockchain is a data structure, right? And so what we saw kind of early on in healthcare and blockchain was a lot of companies worked internally, right? They said, hey, here's my data. I want to apply this data to blockchain. Blockchain isn't about working internally. Blockchain is about either eliminating a third party or uh, creating a trustless environment to where uh, companies interact. Blockchains don't work without collaboration. As I said before, blockchains are software expressions of governance agreements and those governance agreements require that multiple parties come together to decide on how transactions ought to take place. For one party to decide that by themselves really obviates the need for having a blockchain in the first place. If we're going to have a decentralized, distributed network between multiple parties, those multiple parties have to have an understanding and an agreement with each other. That's why we need organizations like Cash Health and other consortia as a forum for those enterprises to come together to make those and hammer out those governance agreements. At the end of the day, anyone who's building a blockchain product has to focus on a network and has to be collaborative and has to bring in and invite um, participants from across the network to be a part of that solution. So a lot of people kind of uh, call that a consortium um, and so that's why a lot of people think of Hashed Health as a, as a consortium as well as a product development company. So consortia help bring companies together um, around specific use cases for blockchain applications, specifically for us in healthcare. <laughs> The company's called Hashed Health, we get, we get this question a lot. Hashing or hashed refers to a hashing algorithm, which is a key cryptographic component of a blockchain. Hash refers to decryption, encryption, and using photography technology. Because that's what John, that's the name John liked, I don't know the answer to that one. <laughs> There's a the hashing function in blockchain, so. And so that's why it's called Hashed Health. I don't know. <laughs> cryptographic hashing. Uh, and it sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs>